Here are five undeniable signs that God does want you to pursue a relationship. Number one, if you have the biblical signs that you possess the gift of marriage rather than the gift of singleness, this is a good sign that you should one day pursue a relationship. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about both sides of pursuing a relationship in general and pursuing a relationship with an individual person. But I'm not promising you any outcomes. I do believe that God will tell you to pursue a relationship, again, in generally and specifically, but that doesn't always mean you're going to end up with that person that you want to be with. It doesn't even mean that you'll for sure get married one day if you feel like you have the biblical signs for the gift of marriage rather than the gift of singleness. Rather, what I'm saying is that when you see these signs that align with what the scriptures say about the gift of marriage, that means you should take action to pursue marriage rather than intentionally taking action to pursue singleness. So for example, Paul wasn't single because he just never ran into the right woman. You know, like if he would have just met the right lady, then he would have gotten married. Paul intentionally tried to remain single and actively avoided pursuing marriage. And that is not what God wants most Christians to do unless he's specifically given them the gift of singleness. So I've talked about this in other places. So in the right corner of your screen, I'll leave a card to a video called Three Signs God Wants You to Pursue Marriage Rather Than Singleness. But in summary, real quick, the basic signs that you should pursue marriage are that you have a strong sexual desire, that you want to pursue marriage, you want to glorify God, that's a desire you have, and on the other side, you would be sad to intentionally pursue singleness. If those are things that resonate with you, that probably means God does want you to pursue a relationship. Number two, if God has given you the faith to hope in a relationship that might not occur, then this is a good sign that you should pursue it. So when it comes to pursuing blessings from God and having faith to receive those blessings, there's a false belief that's common amongst Christians where they believe you have to know beforehand that this is what God is going to do Otherwise, you don't have faith and therefore you're not going to receive what you want. So when it comes to relationships and meeting the one God has for you, a lot of people feel like they need to know instantly before God will give it to them. So if they don't believe that's the one, then they don't have faith and therefore God won't bless them with that relationship. This really isn't how it works though. God usually gives people enough faith to pursue something that they hope is what God wants for them, and they're willing to step out to pursue it, even though they're there, there's the possibility that it might not be what God has planned for them. Proverbs 13, 12 states, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a desire fulfilled is a tree of life. So it seems these two outcomes always come packaged together in the realm of possibility. If you want the possibility of being with someone, you also have to open yourself up to the possibility of it not happening. So rather than giving you an unbreakable promise that someone is going to be your future spouse, God will give you a healthy hope that maybe this person could be your future spouse and it's worth the risk to try to find out. Number three, if it would not be sinful to pursue a relationship or a particular person and you want to be in a relationship or with this certain person, then you should pursue it. So it's a really important principle in scripture that romance, the, the romantic type of love, is not a biblical command that you have to do. Rather, it's a biblical option for those Christians who desire this. When you apply that principle to an individual relationship, it's safe to say and biblical to say that if you don't want to be with that person, God doesn't want you to be with that person. Now, of course, God may lead you to give someone a chance. He may tell you to be open-minded and then your feelings could change. That certainly happens often. But if your feelings never change, that's a clear sign that that is not the person God has for you. So on the flip side, while it's not a guarantee that if you do have strong feelings for this person, that yeah, that's the one, it is a sign that it's one of the prerequisites that would need to be there if God does 
lead you to marry this person. So it's a foundational piece that's there that at least gives you the green light to say, yeah, you should pursue this. Again, if there's no other biblical reason that you shouldn't. 1 Corinthians 7, 36 states, if anyone thinks that he is not behaving properly toward his betrothed, and if his passions are strong, and it has to be, let him do as he wishes. Let them marry. It is no sin. Number four, if there's no other way to know what God's will is for this relationship desire that you have, other than pursuing it, then this is a clear sign that you should pursue it. Those who wait to act until they know God's will about the future are the ones who are always frozen in the present. Many people think it's a sign of faith when they're passionately seeking God's will about a future outcome for a relationship. So they meet someone that they're kind of interested in and then they think that they have a lot of faith because they're really seeking after God's will to know, Lord, is this the one? In a way though, this is actually a sign that you lack faith. Because if you need an abundance of confirmation about a small decision, or you need to know the full outcome and see the future before you take any steps of action, again, that is actually undercutting your ability to express faith. You have to remember what faith really is. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. If you see, you can't have faith for it. You can only have faith when there is a lack of visible assurance for the thing you hope for. Therefore, if you really wanna know what God's will is for a relationship or just relationships in general, and God's not showing that to you, then really the only thing you can do is pursue it and see what happens, see what occurs in real life and God will give you evidence for what he wants you to do next. And number five, if you meet someone that you love and this person loves you and you both wanna honor the Lord in marriage, this is a clear biblical sign that God does want you to pursue marriage. So every now and then I get an email from someone, go something like this. So my boyfriend and I are both Christians. We love the Lord. We want to honor the Lord in marriage. We feel like we're prepared to get married, but we're just not sure if it's God's will. You know, what should we do? So I'm personally never going to tell someone what God's will is unless it's something that can be clearly expressed in scripture. You know, it's God's will that you not be unequally yoked. It's God's will that you not fall to sexual temptation. These are things that I can say, that's God's will for you. But when it comes to these personal types of things, I'm never gonna tell anybody that because I'm not a fortune teller. However, in instances like this, where someone tells me these types of details, they're basically answering their own question. So they love each other, they're both Christians, they both wanna be married, they're both wanna honor the Lord in marriage. Why wouldn't God want you to pursue marriage? You meet all the biblical requirements. So at times, again, people want this abundance of visible evidence that assures them everything's going to be perfect and that's just not how God operates. So if you have those biblical signs that you love someone, they love you, the relationship is biblical and you want to get married, that is God speaking through those tangible pieces of evidence. If you sense something that's, you know, why God wouldn't want you to get married, then that's one thing. But if you don't have that sense and you have all this biblical evidence, again, that is how God will lead you to marry someone. So, you know, if you asked me, how did you know for sure that, Bethany was the one. How did you know she was going to be your wife? Well, you know, basically it comes down to, I asked her to marry me and she said, yes. Then I knew that was my future wife. Never forget, marriage pleases the Lord. This is a good thing that he wants for his children. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. For more biblical relationship advice, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I'm Mark from applygodsword.com. Until next time, God bless.